Um, so my name is Dan Camish from Napa Racing UK and I'm a racing driver in the British Touring Car Championship. I'm Louis Foster. I'm racing currently in the States with exclusive Autosport doing uh, Indy Pro 2000. My name is Adam Kostadulu. I've raced for Mercedes AMG since 2016. Now I've raced for 25 years in total and um, yeah but I guess since lockdown been involved in quite a, a lot of sim racing as well. Uh, this year, I'm going to be back in the Mercedes, doing a few historic races. I'm going to be back at the Nürburgring. Hopefully, in the next week or two, I'll be able to confirm another championship that I'll also be a part of. And he is, David Fuminelli knew exactly what he was doing at the start, really took advantage, led on the way, but look at this. Oh, dearie me! Oh, and that's Il Baroni Rampante. Oh, big crash! Big, big crash! Just crossing the line now, Adam Christodoulou with a commanding pro at Adam Christodoulou, uh, their four FIBA motorsport with Rima Jafali. Huge congratulations to both of them. What a way to start their debut season in GT Open. Coaching from Christodoulou clearly paying off and uh, they will be looking to carry that momentum on into race two. The red lights are still on and now they're off and they're racing. It's Carol Bass who will lead into turn one. Jeffries filters through in second. Then it's Christodoulou. Doni has claimed third on the very last lap. Third overall on the 19 car and another Pro-Am win for Jafali and Chris Tulu. There's my colleague George Morgan being an uh, interviewer now for uh, the Pro-Am class winners, uh, Jafali and Chris Tadoulou. And then again on the podium, uh, Adam Chris Tadoulou, uh, and Rima Jafali. Um, what are your goals for the future? Uh, my goals for the future is, uh, I guess, to continue racing and um, win every race that, that we enter. To try and win the British Touring Car Championship um, is certainly my main goal. Um, and of, of course, always be successful. Especially at the Nürburgring, uh, my biggest race of the season is always the Nürburgring 24 hours. Uh, and we always do all the build-up races up to it. So all the uh, VLN or NLS races, as they're, they're now called. So they're minimum four hours as a six hour qualifying race. And this is all preparation for the big Nürburgring 24 hours. It's the, um, the biggest permanent circuit in the world. And uh, it's, it's 25, it's over 25 kilometers. It takes roughly eight minutes to do a lap. And uh, yeah, it's also nicknamed the green hell because at times it can be. Uh, it can be dry on one side of the circuit and completely wet on the other side, in fact, um, in 2016, when we won the race, we had to red flag the race because it started hailing. Um, and so for about two, two, three hours, uh, it wasn't even possible to, to drive up some of the hills. And so they had to red flag um, the race until it was safe to, to continue. Uh, the, obviously the plan is to do Indy Pro. Um, champ the goal is to win a championship, um, try and secure the prize money from Cooper Tires, um, and then move up the ladder in America to Indy Light. I've made these pretty clear by uh, my goals for the future to get to IndyCar. I think it's quite obvious for me being over here and not being in Europe. If I was going to F1, I'd be currently doing FIA F3 or something. So um, yeah. yeah, my goal is to get to IndyCar. I just think it's a more attainable goal and there's just too much, too many issues with the European driver market as far as single seaters are concerned. And I do a lot of customer racing as well, where I race uh, not just with complete pro lineups. AMG has a huge customer uh, base as well. And so we, as, as uh, one of their drivers, we also race with a lot of customers and uh, involved in that is training, coaching, 
simulator work as well and um, we try and use absolutely everything to to get us the advantage on the track what is your best racing memory um so i suppose my biggest racing memory is the is winning the nurburgring uh, 24 hours in 2016. um qualifying didn't quite go to plan we ended up 17. i did the start of the race uh, and this was the one that i just mentioned where it started hailing i managed to make it into the top eight or nine uh, just before the red flag and the, the hailstorm um kept out of trouble and uh yeah 24 hours later uh it went down to the last lap of the race basically it was us versus uh, another mercedes amg they told us not to do anything stupid and so uh mario decided to to stick it down the inside of the other car and there's a little bit of contact um uh, and yeah it's the longest last lap of my race uh mario was in the car at the time and even though it's an eight minute lap it felt like it took close to an hour like i couldn't watch the screen i was pacing up and down but uh yeah the the huge relief at the end when um when he eventually crossed the line and we won it it was the closest finish uh of the nurburgring 24 hours i think it was just short of the uh, six seconds that we won it by in the end which is pretty nuts when you think about it after 24 hours it comes down to just six yeah. seconds uh that's a good one uh i would say it would either have to be both at spa either 2020 spa or 2021 spa they were both different special mm. in different ways the 21 spa i won all three races that was quite cool to be able to do that um be one of the first people to do that in euro formula or the year before at spa as well um when i just hopped into the car for the first time with uh double r being dri driving full-time in british f3 um and then yeah. winning the second race which was quite you know it was their first ever race win in that series so that was quite a special moment as well so i say one of those two um best memory mm, hard to say there's a couple i was on the podium in monaco in porsche super cup a few years ago uh i won at one one a couple of weeks later mm -hmm. Uh, in a Porsche support race, which took place there. Um, and then also my first poly British touring car win at Brands Hatch. Probably the win at Le Mans would be uh, the one that if I really had to say just the one. How do you handle the emotions of rivalries with other teams? I guess all, all you can do is there's always a bit of nervousness, I guess, uh, before any qualifying or jumping into the car for the first time. But basically, once you get your helmet on and you're in the pit lane, I guess at that point you're almost just in the zone and you, and you don't think about that, that stuff. You think, right, what's the next thing that I need to do? So I need to get in the car, obviously. Uh, do your driver change as fast as possible, make sure you're ready, adjust the pedals because uh, we can move the pedals in the steering wheel in the AMG GT3 and then just make sure that when the lo lollipop goes up you are ready to, to launch it down the pit lane and uh, and get into the groove as, as quick as possible. I think um, in junior series, it isn't as bad as it is, say, in yeah. Formula 1. There's a lot less media, a lot less pressure. Drivers in junior series like to put pressure on themselves and they like to you know, make it a huge, huge deal. But realistically, we're all still you know, amateurs. We're all still learning. Uh, we haven't made it to the big leagues yet. So there tends not to be too many rivalries. Um, majority of the drivers are friends, you know, even in Formula One, most of them are friendly. Once you're in the car, you don't really think of much apart from, right, how can I get to the, the next corner as fast as possible? Obviously during battles and stuff, it's a, a little bit about trying to outwit, outwit the, other, the other driver. But uh, yeah, it's around the Nurburgring, of course, there's also other traffic um, because there's over 150 cars that can race at one time, with it being 25 kilometers. Uh, it's actually fairly spaced out, but it's, uh, it's the closing speeds, which uh, are the incredible differences and uh, 
like with the big tires, big brakes and downforce and aerodynamics that GT3 has, uh, it's incredible how the top speed isn't huge, but I suppose it's all relative. Like we're doing about 275 kilometers an hour. Um, actually, some of the smaller cars have a higher top speed because uh, they've got less drag, but our braking performance and our cornering speeds are beyond anything else that's uh, uh, that, that's racing realistically i tend not to just let it get to me i just do my own thing and and you know if if i'm doing as best i can and they still beat me then it is what it is we learn and move on next year and try and do better how does sim racing compare to real life how does it feel um so i find sim racing is good for a number of things it's good for learning the tracks mm. uh, if you've not been somewhere before um the tracks now can be laser scanned. They're really high detail. So to be honest, sometimes you you go to a track you haven't been to, but you've done it on the sim and it is a bit like deja vu. You get that feeling of I've been here before um, because if there's a mark on the track, if there's a mark on a wall, if there's all kinds of different things, they are there in real life and they are there in the sim. So that's very good. They are great, I think, for, for the pressure that you feel. You know, if you're leading an online sim race, I do quite a lot of iRacing. If you're leading a race or uh, whatever it might be, the pressure that you feel from the guy behind, that is very similar. It is the same as what you feel in real life. Um, you know, that pressure of hitting the breaking point, the turning point, getting the lap time, no mistakes, while someone is breathing down your neck, that is the same. Okay, the risks are a bit bigger in real life and the rewards are bigger um, at times, although then again, you know, some sim races are, are incredibly important these days. So yeah. that pressure is the same. So, um, you know, I think it's great for that, for that mental sort of training. I do, I do think it's hard to to get the feel of the car. Like I do quite a lot in the Porsche Cup car on iRacing. And yeah. there are times I've jumped, I've jumped straight out of the race car and come home and had a go. And the familiarities, the familiarities are incredible, actually. They do, you know, the nuances in there of how you get the Porsche to work and how you get it to work on the sim, actually quite amazing. But my sim doesn't move, there's no motion, there's no risk, you know, of yeah. damage or yeah. injury. There comes a point where it's, it's still a, not a game as such, but it has its limits. The other thing that it can't show you is, it can't really show you the undulations, a bit like watching a, a, an onboard video um, on TV. You know, you go to somewhere like Spa, you can watch it a million times, but nothing prepares you for the first time. You actually try and walk up or Rouge and you realize just yeah. how steep it is. That, that just doesn't come across in games in the same way it doesn't come across in video. So they're really good for some things, but um, yeah, of course they have their limitations. Simulators of getting very, very close. It's actually kind of scary, not gonna lie. Uh, I was lucky enough to drive the Mercedes Formula One simulator um, end of last year. Uh, the one they have in Brackley yeah. is a huge rig. Um, can't go into much detail. They made me sign an NDA about it, which is the weirdest <laughs> thing ever. But I, yeah, it was cool. Um, yeah, that was for the Autosport Award. Um, and that thing was obviously I haven't driven a Formula One car, so I can't really compare it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it felt very I, I, when I was in it, I felt like, yeah, this is kind of how an F1 car would feel minus the G forces. But yeah, yeah, I use it mainly for um, preparation so like for example in st petersburg which was my first round about a month ago um i hadn't been around the track before i hadn't you know it was a new new new, new circuit to me and i needed preparation yeah. because i only had 30 minutes to practice so um did a lot of sim work before that one just to kind of hit the ground running really that's 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 what i use it mainly for i'm not the biggest of sim guys and there's a lot of people who i mean i don't, don't have, even have a sim in america at the moment so uh, my sim's back at home in the uk but I just use it for preparation. You know, it's a good tool um, to use to to just kind of get your eye in and and, and get get your you know, kind of when you get there, how you feel on the ground. Yeah. So you've got the sim rig in the background. Yep. How does sim racing compare to the real thing? How close are they? I mainly use eye racing just because I think for the multiplayer um, online platform, it's got the most or the best multiplayer. Uh, like servers and everything and there's always people online and you're able to do this but there's other softwares like R Factor and Assetto Corsa and ACC where I think the the model or the physics are a little bit more realistic um, and different softwares also have different tracks so I use it if I haven't been to a circuit before I'll download the circuits depending on what software uh, I'm able to get it on and I'll learn the directions of the track pre having my sim uh, as a kid I, I believe that I ended up picking up the Nurburgring quicker than some of my teammates. 
because I was a huge fan of uh, Gran Turismo 2. Uh, well, Gran Turismo, all the Gran Turismos actually. Right. But I think it was Gran Turismo yeah. 2 where, funnily enough, there was a Mercedes challenge where you learn a fifth of the circuit at a time. And being competitive, I always had to make sure I got yeah, gold before I moved on to the next uh, section. And, oh. and so I ended up, in, in theory, I learned the track a fifth at a time, which I think maybe uh, helped me learn the circuit in real life quicker. Because I only found out I was going to the Nürburgring two days before I actually went there. So I didn't get any chance to do any prep or simulator work. But there was sections of the track that I remembered from being on the PlayStation. Certain softwares um, with their formula cars, like iRacing with their formula cars is really good. I think with, unfortunately with the Mercedes AMG GT3 that they have on there, the physics aren't quite right, but a new model is coming very soon uh, with the correct physics and stuff. So I'm interested to, to drive that um, and to see how different it feels because at the moment it's uh, a little too knife edge, which is uh, unrealistic versus the real life car. The real life car is one of the most stable GT3s. And I think that's why you see so many people using it in the endurance races because the thing's bulletproof, it's super safe, and it's, it's more civilized, I think, than some of the other cars to drive, which generally means that the driver is faster over a longer stint. How do you handle the emotions when things don't quite go your way? Practice, I guess. You know, I've been doing it a long time. Like we all have really, you know, most people that I race against have been doing it a very long time. You know, I started when I was 12, I'm now 32, so that was 20 years ago. Um, and yeah, you know, you, you learn as a kid, I came up through karting. I always tell people that, you know, motor racing is, it's kind of like 80, 90% character building. You have a lot of tough days, a lot of hard days. You come home upset. Um, but if I could tell you the amount of times that I've come home from a racetrack, you know, upset and thinking, bloody hell, you know, do I want to, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. It's too hard or, you know, getting upset and talking to my parents, you know, it, any, like any sport, it's, it's really tough. But the good days make up for it. Um, and the more you do, the better you get, the less tough days you have, the more better days you have. And yeah, you know, yeah, you've got to learn to deal with those tough days like anything in life, really. It really depends which emotion you're, you're feeling, I guess, at that point. Obviously, there can be some frustration, um, but generally you're, you're surrounded by teammates. And I guess uh, there's the saying that you, you win together and you lose together. Obviously, in the big endurance races, a lot more things can happen uh, and you've got to have some luck on your side. Um, yeah, that's that's the toughest one. Um, I'll be honest, I'm usually very moody when it doesn't go right. I don't tend to get angry. I just get very irritable. Um, so, you know, if I have a bad session or I didn't get quite where I wanted to get in like qualifying or whatever I'll be quite moody for a while after it but eventually you know you just you just kind of knock yourself down a peg and just realize you know it's not the end of the world you just get on with it and you're like right well it's happened now can't change it let's just make sure it doesn't happen again so you go and do your day three engineer yeah. and you just fix it I think it's just about having quite a adult mindset about things you can have your moment of I'm pissed off but yeah once once that's passed just get on with it